Hard evidence, finally, the autopsy report of 70 patients. Original article, ventilators were not actually improving the results. Medicine is as much an art. And that is how we are going to survive as a community. Hi guys, this is big news. I am really excited to bring you hard evidence. Finally, the New England Journal of Medicine has released the autopsy report of 70 patients who had COVID-19. And the autopsy has been done in five countries. And today we will be discussing what the findings of the autopsy were. Yes, now we know what happened inside those who passed on. We know why ventilators did not work in some patients and we also know which came first the thrombosis or the clotting problems in COVID-19 or the actual ARDS or the respiratory failure and all this will become clear as I give you my interpretation of this article this article is an original article published in the New England Journal of Medicine in June 2020 first let us understand what a journal is scientific paper basically is a written account of the entire research process that is the people involved the subjects involved the methodology involved the algorithms involved finally the statistical formulas with a conclusion and a result so this is going to be why they did the study how they did the study where they did the study and when they did the study and finally what did they find out from the study what was the result and the conclusion i will also be adding the original link of the article in my description below so let's get straight into the why do you remember how the COVID-19 started? We heard of it as a respiratory, as an atypical respiratory pneumonia in Wuhan, China, where people were getting infected, they had coughs, breathlessness, and they were suddenly falling dead. Then everybody said the term ARDS, which is Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, which means we needed ventilators. There was a hurry for ventilators. Everybody wanted to buy ventilators. And two weeks later, news came out that ventilators were not actually improving the results. Maybe we should stop putting patients on ventilators so fast, but rather start them on these anticoagulant drugs because there might be clots forming in their lungs, which could be causing this respiratory distress and now we are treating patients with anticoagulants and delaying the ventilators by trying to keep them on blood thinners and oxygen as much as possible and the results are much better than what they were before but these autopsies were done because we need to know what is happening inside the dead one we needed to isolate the SARS-CoV-2 virus post-mortem two we needed to identify what type of acute respiratory distress was being caused by this virus three we needed to see if the coagulation problem came first or the respiratory distress came first and four we had to see whether the clots which were forming in the small blood vessels the capillaries were actually a different kind of clot or the same kind of clot as usually emboli or thrombuses form from the methodology or for us the how five different teams five different countries and five different timelines starting from april in italy and the last study was done in the us in june three of the teams did a conventional open autopsy with all universal precautions including ppes and donning and doffing techniques complete sterile procedures were followed and nobody who was involved in the autopsies were infected these three autopsies were specifically done to find out the type of respiratory distress and alveolar damage which was caused in the dead and also to identify what type of clot was there in the small blood vessels which was surrounding the alveoli the team from brazil did an advanced minimally invasive ultrasound guided autopsy of not just the lungs but of all the body the purpose of this team was to identify if there were clots in just the lungs or there were clots in all the other organs also like the spleen the liver or the kidney the last team from the us did a comparative autopsy that is they did an autopsy of patients who had covid 19 and they compared it with the findings of a patient who had h1n1 influenza so where and when this started off in april with italy they did 38 autopsies then 
in May, Germany, Austria and Brazil did 10, 10 and 12 autopsies each and this study concluded in June with the comparative study done in the US. So to summarize all the points before we go to what actually the autopsies revealed, we already know why the autopsy was done, how the methodology which was used and when and where it was done. Now let's see what we actually got to know from these autopsies. Pay attention. One, we found out that the cause of death in all patients was acute respiratory distress syndrome that is damage to the alveoli. We were able to isolate SARS-2-CoV viruses from all the post-mortem patients. So this is caused by the SARS-CoV-2. So let all the other assumptions be laid to rest in solid concrete. Three, we identified that it is in fact a problem of clotting which causes the ARDS and it is not the other way around. Four, we also broke down the arterioles and we compared what kind of clotting disorder was happening. Now, in order to form a mature or a complete clot, there are two important stages. The main stage is the formation of a meshwork. This is formed with a protein called fibrinogen. And once this meshwork is formed, this is still a clot, but it is not a strong clot. Then the component of blood, which is thrombin, comes and fills this meshwork and then a complete or a mature thrombus is formed. What we identified was in 90% of the lungs, it was not a complete thrombus in the arterioles, but it was the immature fibrinogen clot which was there in the arterioles. And this could be a reason of all the hidden symptoms which patients are experiencing in the COVID-19. Let's discuss what the US team found out when they compared the post-mortem of the COVID-19 bodies with the H1N1 bodies. They found out that there was a 9 fold increase in thrombus is found in the alveoli of the COVID-19 when compared to the alveoli of the H1N1 which means the pathology of COVID-19 is completely different from the pathology of H1N1. They also found out that the angiogenesis factor was three times as high in COVID-19 patients than it was in H1N1. Angiogenesis or new blood vessel formation can be a good thing or a bad thing. It can be a good thing when it forms collaterals like completely formed blood vessels with all three layers which are needed so that the blood vessels do not burst when there is an increased blood pressure or when there is stress. Sometimes neogenesis is harmful like when blood vessels proliferate in cancer. In COVID-19, the neogenesis was not a good type of neogenesis and this bad angiogenesis caused a lot of incompletely formed blood vessels which also ruptured leading to death in many cases. At this point, it would be super interesting to tell you that the first four studies which we have just discussed now only saw the lungs, but the last study which was done in Brazil, which was the ultrasound study, could check all the other organs also like the spleen, the liver and the pancreas. And you know what they found? They found similar clots in those organs like there was in the alveoli. And this is why humility in medicine is extremely important because medicine is as much an art as it is a science and it is evolving and as information comes in we should inform ourselves and we should adapt and that is how we are going to survive as a community and if you liked what you saw tell me what else you would like me to talk about in the comments below and subscribe to my channel so that you can get regular updates like this see you guys thanks a lot for listening i really appreciate it bye bye